Imagine a small red angry looking bump that seems to appear almost overnight. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Only in the sense that it looks dramatic, but it isn't dangerous. So don't panic whenever you face such a thing. It believes at the slightest touch scares the patient with its rapid growth, but it's actually benign and not dangerous. In this patient it has been formed about 3 weeks ago after a slight cut on her finger with a piece of glass and it became larger gradually over this time. Despite its name is neither pyogenic nor granulomatous. Pyogenic means pus producing but there is no pus here. And granulomatous means a chronic inflammatory lump, simply said. But this is actually a proliferation of tiny blood vessels and there is no inflammation normally. Now here is the question, how does it form? Think of it as your skin's over-enthusiastic repair after an injury or irritation. Normally our body tries to heal by forming granulation tissue at the first step after injuries. But in these cases, for some reason, the process doesn't stop when it should. And you end up with a bright red, fleshy overgrowth of capillaries. There are some reasons triggers this impaired mechanism like minor trauma that can be insect bites, cut or splinters, chronic irritation especially on hands, hormonal influence like in pregnancy and some medications can do this also. If you look at the appearance of the pyogenic granuloma like what you see in this video, it is a small dome shaped or pedunculated red nodule. It varies in size and can be a few millimeters in some individuals to about 2 centimeters in its larger shapes. It commonly pops up on finger, face, lips, gums and sometimes on their nails. Actually unlike cysts or abscess, pyogenic granuloma is solid and normally there is no fluid inside. If fluid comes out like what you see in this patient, it's probably because of serum from irritation, blood from ruptured capillaries, or pus from secondary infection. So draining it won't cure it. It is like popping the top of a weed without pulling the root. The definite treatment is to remove the lesion and destroy the root. Because if the root remains inside, it will come up again. So the first step is surgical excision, then curtage with cautery, and always a sample should be sent for histology to confirm the diagnosis and ruling out other possible diagnoses. If the patient felt heavy pressure inside and we had to drain the fluid, the fluid removal is just a temporary relief and the underlying lesion will remain till it removes surgically.